have. Um, yeah, that's like me on the working from home struggle yeah. in the pandemic. <laughs> Hi, I'm so, yes. So, and I'm making sure um, we are live on the page and it looks like, oh yeah, okay, cool. We've got some people here and this will be saved. So Cody, thanks for doing this today. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, guys. So we are going to talk pelvic floor, brought me a little pelvis, physical therapy. And Cody, um, when we, you can introduce yourself and talk about, you know, how you came to Kentucky, what you're doing. But I'm excited today because I, I had asked on the page if anybody had questions about pelvic floor and physical therapy. And most of the questions were kind of about like, why is it so hard to get? So that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And I'm excited to have you here. So take it away. Um, so yeah, I um, have been a physical therapist uh, last 10 years. And then for the last eight years, I have been specializing in pelvic floor therapy. Uh, I did my training in Austin, Texas, where I lived for eight years um, with a, a great group, um, a specialty clinic that just did pelvic floor therapy. And so much knowledge. It was so great to have that kind of mentorship of um, other women that had been doing it longer than I had. Um, so it was just a really invaluable experience. Um, and it's just such a passion to bring physical therapy, a public floor therapy to women who need it, which is pretty much <laughs> everyone. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I had the opportunity to come back to Lexington where I college. Um, spread pelvic floor therapy here in um, an, an area where there aren't as many pelvic floor therapists. So I was really excited about that. Well, we are excited you're here for all those reasons. Um, it's yep. definitely something that needs awareness. So I'm glad we're doing this today. And I hope that more people, more women in Central Kentucky go seek out physical floor, pelvic floor physical therapy because of this. So, so yeah, what would you say are those barriers? Like, why is it so hard to get pelvic floor physical therapy? So yeah, it's, it's, it's not hard to, to get it. It's just, it's knowing the right things and knowing like, what is it they mm. said? Knowledge is half the battle. Actually, I think that was G. Um, <laughs> so the thing is just awareness, like mm. women, not, they've never heard of pelvic floor therapy. It's relatively mm. new. Uh, it's mm. people have been many, many, many years, decades. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the spectrum of health in general and physical therapy in general, it's relatively newer. Um, and mm. the other barrier with that is that pelvic floor therapy is for issues that people don't always feel comfortable talking about. Mm. So if someone had back surgery or knee surgery, they might be like, yeah, go see my pelvic or go see my physical therapist. No concerns about talking about it. But if you're talking about urinary incontinence or other issues, people may not be as quick to say, yeah, I had physical therapy for that. Um, so that's a big thing is just educating people. When I have patients come in and they're like, my doctor recommended this. I've never heard of it. I went and Googled, uh, mm. you know, what's going to happen. Um, you know, a lot of women haven't heard of it and they're, especially surrounding labor and delivery and postpartum, a lot of women, um, you know, maybe heard from their aunt or their mom, you know, their grandmother, they've heard about those experiences and pelvic floor mm. therapy wasn't necessarily an option for them. So women oh, make Cody, that this is, yeah. When, sorry, to one second. I think we lost your video. Oh, okay. One second. I'm so sorry. I can hear you weirdly, but I can't see you. Yeah, let's see what's going on. So, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That yeah, and when I just double check the, uh, the stream on the page, I just saw me. But I don't know why, because I just, like, you were there, and then you just suddenly. All right. Weren't there. Hi, guys. All right, let me try a couple things. Yeah, and if you need to, we can always, that link is the same. You can always go back and out and, but. Guys who are just joining, Cody was just talking about um, some of those barriers to pelvic floor physical therapy. Okay, I think I see you now. And we lost her video for a second, but she's about to come back on. Yay! Okay, there you are. Hooray! All done. <laughs> okay. Oh, and now I can... Hold on. I just lost your audio. Oh, no. There we go. Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry. Our moms, grandmothers, aunts um, didn't have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
And so a lot of women, if they're not, you know, talking to their doctor about it or talking to friends who maybe recently had children about it um mm -hmm. they don't know the option and they think that these issues are just kind of the price we pay for having babies and it's just not true right. um even though right. these pelvic floor dysfunction is common it these issues aren't normal and so that's kind of the big difference yeah. is that a lot of people have them but that doesn't mean that it's just something they have to live with Right. And I hear, you know, you hear a lot moms will joke about like, I can't go jump on the trampoline with my kids because I'll like pee on myself or, or right. jokes about like not being able to get back, um, you know, get back to an exercise routine for that fear. So you're saying that's normal or that that's very common, but it's not normal. It doesn't have to happen. Yeah. And, right. you know, even I'll have people kind of just say, you know, I ask people, what are your goals? Like, what do you want to be able to do that right now you can't do? And sometimes they'll kind of, mm. well, you know, I, I pee a little when I jump on the trampoline, but that's not that big of a deal. And it's like, but don't you want to have that freedom to play with your kids <laughs> however you want and not have to worry about yeah. ah, mom's got to go down, you guys play, you know? So that's, it's an option. It's available to be able to work towards those goals, to have that fully mm. functional life, not having to do anything from the sidelines um, because of pelvic floor issues. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's um, another, why else going to be hard to get? Yeah. So another thing that's interesting is, um, is kind of doctor awareness. So there's the mm. moms not knowing, but you would think, okay, doc, doctors should know about this. And with <laughs> right. my doctors, there's there's so much education that they get on so many things, but mm. physical therapists are the muscle experts. Like that's what we do. We specialize yeah. in the body. So we kind of know more about the muscles than even your OBGYN. Um, and yeah, that's a good point they spend so much time and this happens in health professions in general we all spend so much time learning what we need to know but we don't necessarily learn what other people know so mm. you you don't know sometimes that oh there's a person out here that's treating this because right. you're busy figuring out what you have to know to be a doctor or to be a physical therapist so opening the lines of communication with other providers is really important and that's something that i've really worked on with OBGYNs, midwives um you know gastroenterologists yeah. urologists all of those things just so they know hey you know physical therapists can do this that's something that's highly beneficial for patients um and so that they can kind of have that in their mind and go hmm i wonder if this patient mm -hmm. could be that and refer them so that's something that pelvic floor therapists in general really work to educate the medical community that this is an option um it's something that's pretty non-invasive that we can at least try before we head down the route of surgery and even some you know medications so mm -hmm. it's it's a really um good option for a lot of people and a lot of people really benefit from that Nice. And isn't it, I've heard this, you could confirm, is it true that in, in some, some countries, pelvic floor, like a check-in is just normal part of your postpartum yeah. care package. Like, just like we go for that, you know, four, you know, two, four or six week check now in other countries, you also just do a pelvic floor physical therapy check. Right. Yeah. So there is, uh, especially in Europe where you go home with a baby and a prescription for pelvic floor therapy. So it's just kind wow. of an Thing. It's a standard of care. And that's something that pelvic floor therapists are really pushing for in the U.S. We're not there yet. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. it's it's unfortunate that, you know, a woman who goes through childbirth, that's a lot. And even though it's a beautiful, natural, natural, wonderful thing, that's trauma to your body. They've actually done some studies yeah. where they MRIs of a woman's pelvis after having a baby. And it's like the same sort of trauma that like high level athletes might ha have or like marathon runners. Oh, wow. And, and wow. In like, ooh, let's help you, you high level athlete. You. It's like, well, here's a newborn that you have to keep alive and take care of and good luck with that. <laughs> right, right, right. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. So there's a reason so you guys, it. you feel like you've run the, run a marathon or you've been in the Olympics after you have a baby because physically you literally did like you did that same effort. Right. Um, and so wow. we're 
we're working on, you know, trying to get those postpartum um, checkups with a pelvic floor therapist to at mm. least kind of figure out, even if you're not having issues right now, figure yeah. out what's going on with your body and what you need to heal and to rehab to get to where you were before so that you're not okay. having issues down the road. Right. <clears throat> now, I want you, I, don't, I know you have a list, but I'll ask this question now. Now, and you can answer it now if it makes sense or later, but talking about that kind of just that care that's needed after your body, does, is that true for a vaginal birth as well as a cesarean birth? Yeah. So, um, especially, so people would kind of think commonly with vaginal delivery, yes, there's stretching of <laughs> muscle stretching of things, vaginal delivery, there can be tears. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. To get them out. Um, but so definitely we think about that for probably a vaginal delivery. Sometimes people think, mm -hmm. well, I had a season, so I didn't go through that part of it, but you've still mm -hmm. carried the weight of a baby for mm -hmm. you know, 10 months. So sitting on those pelvic floor muscles, so they can still be stretched. Mm -hmm. They can do that. And a lot of times we see women who've had a C-section, they may not necessarily be having the same symptoms, but they may be having symptoms. So pain, abdominal mm -hmm. pain with the baby, pain in their C-section, our site, mm. uh, you know, pain with intercourse, which can kind of go both ways. But right. those are all things that a pelvic floor therapist can help to address. That's wonderful. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I, I talked a little bit about just how, you know, we can try to do, I say prehab, but, you know, try to, <laughs> try to do things early. I mm. think a lot of women and even some doctors there's kind of a waiting game like, oh, well, let's just see if this goes away. And especially mm -hmm. for new moms who have no idea what to expect, they're like, well, mm -hmm. this is going to resolve. I just, you know, had a baby and nobody really knows kind of what, when things should be resolved. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, if you go to your, your six week postpartum checkup, which is pretty standard and you're still having, um, you know, pain or you're still having mm -hmm. urinary incontinence or you're having difficulty avoiding your bladder, or you get cleared for intercourse after your six week postpartum checkup and you're and it's really painful after maybe the yeah. first or second time. Yeah. Uh, those are all really good reasons to go see a pelvic floor therapist. Mm. Um, but, you know, people, again, kind of talking about let's wait and see if that resolves. So there's some statistics. So this was kind of crazy to me, but Women who reported urinary incontinence three months postpartum, 75% okay. of those women still had urinary incontinence when their child was 12 years old. 12. 12 years old. So 12. 75%. Years old. Oh my God. Now, not somebody that went and addressed the issue. But right. if you're having issues three months postpartum, chances are those aren't just going to go away. And wow. I think that the really important thing with postpartum, and there's kind of been this shift in this talking about the fourth trimester, it's yeah. turn to getting your getting yourself kind of back where you were. And I think that's where the ball really can get dropped for women because yeah. the shift is so much to a newborn. And for moms, prioritizing your self-care mm. in and not just taking care of the baby. You've got to take care of yourself to really take care of your, your child. And so that kind of comes to another barrier is like, mm. like you don't have the time you're, or the energy to devote to your self-care because you're, you're loving and caring for a newborn. Right. So that's a really common barrier. Um, and it, it can be a challenge, but I think I, I speak for myself, but I think I speak for most pelvic floor therapists. If you have a newborn and the choice is to either have to bring your baby to an appointment or not come, please bring your bring baby. the baby. Yes. Now, yes. So times are a little <laughs> iffy depending on, you know, clinic kind of rules and regulations. But in in the past, anyway, I've held babies. I've fed babies. Well, the things that that they need to do. And the other That's part awesome. of that is if we're working on your body mechanics to make sure that your 
in a good position for breastfeeding so you don't have back pain or if you're if you have right. to lift a baby or lift a carrier and we want to make sure that we're being protective of your pelvic floor and everything right. uh, what better way to do that than the thing that <laughs> yeah. you're doing picking up your baby that's such um, a good point it's a really functional activity because that's what you're doing all day every day that's such a good point so just knowing that those kinds of options are available and then now because of the covid um issues a lot more people are doing telehealth so it may be a situation that it's just you know you maybe you live far away from a pelvic floor therapist because there's not one in your town that's very common especially in rural areas right. or um you know because of your work schedule or whatever the case may be um maybe you can get in for an initial assessment and be examined by a pelvic floor therapist and then if we need to use the telehealth option to help you with progressing your program you know it's it's very dependent on what your needs are but those mm. options are a lot more readily available now and often covered by insurance because of the 19 restrictions when they weren't before that's actually really good. That was um, another part when I asked the question, like, what questions do you have? One of the, the responders commenters said that very thing, like, like, why isn't this more available? Like, I don't have anyone near me. So that's a really great solution. Maybe you do pick a day where you actually go in person, even if the therapist is farther away, but then telehealth could be an option to continue your program. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. Absolutely. And I thought too, you know, I, um, I know I, I was interested in bringing you on here because personally public for therapy has helped me out so much. And I certainly brought my baby and I had like, you guys, I had the fussiest, craziest baby, um, you know, experience. And even then, like the therapist was so great. She's like, listen, I don't care who needs to hold her. I don't care. You know, you can hold your baby and we can do what we need to do. Even like this kind of right. layer up on yep. yourself, you know, Press and then, um, Right, right. Oh, yeah, I did that breastfeed during the appointment, like whatever you need to do. It's it's so worth it. Like, I, I'm glad you said that. Like, if your choice is, is bring the baby or don't go, just bring your baby. But maybe even another option, maybe you get, you know, so many people have babies together with like friends, maybe you and your friends like work out a deal like, hey, we, we both value therapy. So you watch my baby for my appointment. And then I can watch your baby for your appointment. Maybe you guys collaborate and do that. You know, there's so many ways if you know what's a priority there's right. you make priorities happen yeah so and yeah it it is and this is kind of leading to another barrier but um mm. this is another reason to prioritize things early so especially mm. with cost cost is always a concern because you just had a new right. just right paid for a delivery um right whatever associated costs um so one thing that's good is that a lot of public floor therapists are in um, clinics and locations that take insurance. So I know where I am. Mm -hmm. We take insurances, we take Medicare, we take Medicaid. So we can get coverage for your as long as your your program, your insurance program covers physical therapy. It's there doesn't have mm. to be a coverage for pelvic floor therapy. That's awesome. Um, so that is typically covered. Now it depends on your plan. So some people may have a copay for each visit. Mm. So I have a coinsurance. Um, that's something you just have to kind of look at. But in going back to not waiting to, you know, so long, yeah. if you need physical therapy, if you need pelvic floor therapy, especially if you're having some issues, it's really great to be able to address that early on for mm -hmm. a variety of reasons. We don't want you to suffer. Right. 12 Needless. years <laughs> right right but also yeah. when you um deliver typically you have just met your deductible for the year and so continuing to get care to help to kind of rehab your body instead of waiting a year and now you haven't mm -hmm. met your deductible. so it's a it's i think a really good reason to prioritize taking care of things early, A, so they don't get worse, so you don't have to yeah. experience that over a long period of time, but also because then it's going to be less of a barrier financially for you um, to get the care that you need. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great point. Yeah, people don't think about that part, but no, as someone, yeah, very smart. <laughs> at their deductible, it's like, oh, I need to take care of everything now that yeah. my has been met for the oh, oh yeah that's a great point yeah so um 
yeah, the, I guess the final thing we touched on already a little bit is kind of um, mm. having a pelvic floor therapist in your area. So that's not something that you can really do a lot about as a, as a patient, but um, yeah. like we talked about, telehealth is kind of an option, especially if there's someone relatively near you that you could at least mm. get an evaluation. Um, there are people yeah. that do telehealth and they do, you know, obviously they can't do a physical exam uh, right. online or whatever, but they can right. at least give the best advice possible if there's really no one anywhere near you. Um, the clinic that yeah. I trained, they actually had people come from out of state and bring a physical therapist oh, with them. Wow. It was kind of crazy. They stayed in this city for two weeks and we trained their wow. po their physical therapist to try wow. to, they would have someone to do at least as much as they could for them. And we, we treated the patient for two weeks, um, you know, gave them exercise, yeah. but they lived in a state where like for hours around there was, wow. um, so there, there are options, you know, get in touch with the nearest public right. floor you can find. That's there are a couple of online, um, that can, kind of steer you towards a pelvic floor therapist. So there's a group called Herman and Wallace. It's um, Pelvic Rehab Institute. They do a lot of continuing okay. education things and they have an online provider directory. So it's Herman and Wallace, if you just Google that. Okay. Um, and we'll put that in the comments yeah. too for the replay. But. And then the, is the APTA um, pelvic health section. So APTA is the American Physical Therapy Association okay. and they have a for pelvic health. And you can okay. also go on their um, website and look for providers. That's wonderful to know about. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> so that's a resource too. Like if, if someone were to talk with their, their midwife or their OB, their doctor, whoever, um, and maybe that, per, maybe that provider is like, well, I don't know. You can even bring these, Hey, here's two places to look, you know, like I'm going to, I just need whatever, like the referral or, or however that works. You know, do, do you have to have a referral to come to physical therapy or can you just like show up and say, I'm having issues. I need help. So in the state of Kentucky, it's a direct access state, which means you do not have to mm. have a referral for, okay. in order to be a physical therapist. Right. How asterisk. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you're going to use your insurance, a lot mm. of insurance require it. So okay. even though you don't have to, um, the ins your insurance company may require it. Now, a lot of places allow people to do self-pay options. So sure. okay. that's not, so, but generally right. go and ask, it can be your, your, um, your OBGYN. It can be your, I think, I think midwife advanced nurse practitioners. Oh, yeah. I would, um, yeah. And also like primary care doctor. I mean, yeah, like, pretty Whoever. much. <laughs> Uh, can write you a referral for, for physical therapy and That's your perfect. insurance will be fine okay. with that. And um, so then if, if you're in a rural area, like those are, we'll link those, but the Herman and Wallace site and the American um, AAPT or American Academy of Physical Therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are two places. So you could say, Hey, here's some places. Like I wanted to go to this person when you write me a referral, you know, like that's really taking charge of your healthcare and, and collaborating that, with your team. I think is one of the biggest things and like kind of an exciting thing to be a part of in this mm -hmm. time in the world is that <laughs> starting to advocate for themselves and you know mm -hmm. so much information on the internet that's mm -hmm. available that we can um really kind of learn and advocate for ourselves because i just think that women know when something's not right you know like you kind of yeah. know your body you may not know what it is but you kind of know, uh, and I get patients all the time that they're like, I didn't really know what was mm. going on, but I thought maybe this, like I tried this stretching and it seemed to help, or I tried right. eat like that seemed to help or, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, you're, you were tuned into your body and you yeah. kind of figured out something that worked for you. And so if we just dive in, when we think something's not right, a talk to your providers and and ask mm. them these questions. Don't be embarrassed to say, I have urinary incontinence. I have pain with intercourse. You know, that's what yeah. your medical providers are there for. They're there to mm -hmm. help you. You, you know, you need to ask those questions yeah. and don't be afraid to say, Hey, I heard pelvic floor therapy can help with this. Will you write me a referral? I don't know of anyone that 
ever asked that their doctor was like, mm, no, we're not going to no. do that. <laughs> right. That's great. Yeah. Mama wants what mama gets. So if you're asking for, <laughs> you know, therapy, um, typically there's, you know, you have a good reason for it. And the, the, the doctors or the providers are mm. going to, they want care. That's great, Cody. So that's fabulous information. Thank you. Um, yeah. If anyone's live watching, yeah, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to leave them here. I'll check the comments in a second. But um, any kind of, I'll, we'll link all of the, the ways to get in touch with you, like in, in the descriptions, comments, all the places. If you're here locally in Lexington, Cody is a fabulous resource, of course. Um, if this has piqued your interest and you're like, yeah, I really do want to get checked out, um, contact Cody. She'll be happy to help you. Um, but I don't know what you had had to talk about, but it, it would be nice as we're kind of wrapping up and again, just throw any comments or questions you might have as we uh, round out here. But you, we've mentioned, you know, urinary incontinence, pain with intercourse, just pain. Are there any other like um, yellow or red flags people should be aware of after and they hear this information and then to kind of say, oh yeah, I should go get checked out. What would those be? Some symptoms. Yeah. A lot of. So basically when we talk about the pelvic floor, we're, we're kind of looking at three areas. Well, three or four areas of function. So we're looking at your bladder, your bowels, um, sexual activity, and then also support. So um, mm. your core muscles are responsible for supporting your internal organs. And so sometimes people will notice like a heavy pressure discomfort after they've had a baby because things aren't in their normal position now. And if muscles right. are weak, not supporting everything the way that they should be. Or, you know, maybe you went to wipe after you urinated and you felt a bulge, something there. Or, you know, if you're on your feet all day and you just have a lot of heaviness and pressure. Um, those are things that a public floor therapist can address as well. It's a okay. it's typically a support of those internal organs. So we we typically talk about, you know, the muscles that close off the urethra, they close off the anal opening, they surround the vaginal opening, and then they support uh, internally. So if you're experiencing pain with any of those things, pain with urination, pain with bowel movements, pain with intercourse, mm. heavy pressure, pain in the pelvic area, see a pelvic floor therapist. If you're experiencing incontinence, urinary or fecal incontinence, or passing gas, yeah. you can't, you just can't keep from passing gas. Um, that can be treated with physical therapy, pelvic floor therapy as well. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, we talked about this. It, this is not a bad, I mean, it, it, this will be, this is standard practice for anyone who has a baby, go get checked out afterwards. But especially if you're having those symptoms in general, if you're having any of these symptoms, baby or not, that's well worth it. Um, I know, especially if you have any, any sort of tearing that was repaired or an episiotomy, even yeah. with um, your birth, certainly like that's kind of like, uh, that's the, a very strong, like you're not crazy, go get it checked out. Even if you don't think you're having issues, you know, something like a tear or a, a cut to, to your perineum, um, that can, that can also kind of go on for years. If you don't just go get it checked out, having pain with it or, or issues, you know, That's there's something lots of reasons. I've kind of tried to work with, especially at WGYNs, like anybody, like any sort of tearing. <laughs> you or stitch if, anything. Yes. Right. He's automatic. Work, right. Especially but yes, just please do. Because even, you know, even minor tears, there's so scar tissue. So you've got new right. skin, you've got scar tissue that can lead to pain. Um, you know, right. there's, there's more than just the minimum of tearing. There's tearing pelvic floor muscles. So there's going to be right. weakness. Um, right. Scar tissue. And something yeah. too, like we, yeah, like you, you're kind of hinting this, that, that bull bulging feeling, you know, as you get, as we get older, you know, we see there's things like, um, pelvic organ prolapse, you know, bowel prolapse, like yep. it's not just like the, right. Like we're kind of saying the the pain might be your immediate sign now of, Hey, go get something checked out, but it certainly can have like longer life consequences. Yep. You, you don't have to have pain or discomfort or, um, your body not functionally functioning optimally, but also it can even lead to like potentially further interventions down the road, right? Like if you're having prolapses, that could be take for more invasive steps that, and you can certainly prevent that now if it, you go get taken care of now. It's great to address these, these issues early on and give right. that because we do see people that are, you know, much older that are, you know, potentially ear prolapse where there is, 
you know, they're going to need surgery because it's kind of just too gone. Right. Um, if we can do things early, we can prevent that. And June yeah. is in prolapse awareness month. Yay. <laughs> um, definitely. If you're experiencing any of that, um, it's, it's, it's good to get checked out in general, just so we can, we can figure out what's going on and what we do need to address. Um, there, I was kind of thinking, I'm losing my train of thought here, but, um, the, getting checked out early. It's just really important. So a lot of times you'll be told even when you're pregnant or, you know, postpartum kind of the, usually the information that you get or the guidance you get is do your Kegels. Okay. So there is actual research that shows for people who are doing their Kegels are doing them incorrectly. So you actually need to be like taught and shown how to contract your pelvic floor. Uh, mm -hmm. secondly, Kegels are not for everyone. It's pain, tense muscles, you're tightening up already tense muscles. And so mm -hmm. you actually don't need to be doing Kegels. Um, right. <laughs> right. If you're doing them wrong, you may be pushing down and further mm -hmm. weak muscles. And if you did have prolapse, you could actually be making that. Work. So mm -hmm. it's do, do your Kegels is not enough, um, advice you need to actually be treated and instructed in how to right. appropriately rehab your pelvic floor. And that needs to be an individual approach based on what your body needs, not a generalized okay. plan. If you that is so good. So, so that's a great way. So um, like you mentioned, it's pelvic pro, pelvic organ prolapse awareness month, maybe one way that you, um, you know, take do some self care that you can celebrate or mark this month is go get yourself a pelvic floor therapy appointment, you know, just go get things checked out. I highly recommend it. Um, I've done it just I've done it for that reason of like when I first learned about this a couple years ago, I, I hadn't been pregnant or anything recently. It was just like, yeah, I'll go do it. I, I've never done this. I want we had met our deductible. It's like, what the heck, let's just go. And then I did find it very useful. Useful, um, just personally after the birth of one of my kids, um, you know, having some some issues that we've been talking about, and I'm thankful that I had the information to, and I knew I didn't have to be afraid to talk to my, you know, provider, and I could just say like, I want to go get this checked out. You know, will you please refer me? And it, I'm so glad I did. Everyone should feel that freedom. So there you go. Go celebrate pelvic organ prolapse awareness month. Um, celebrate the work Cody's doing and other pelvic floor physical therapists are doing or pelvic yeah physical therapists are doing. And yeah, go make an appointment. There you go. Simple. Go find your closest person and, and just call, you know. And we'll so, put like, how you can reach me. Yes. Um, and um, yeah, um, especially the, the central Kentucky area. Yeah, you can. I mean, feel free to share that now, like on video. And we'll, we'll definitely also put it in the comments and description. But where can so, people find you? you uh, Want to reach out to me. The best way is um, I go by monitor. So uh, you can find me on Instagram. Um, and then actually the best way to get in touch with me is just to email me at mama mender. It's spelled like it sounds uh, mm -hmm. at gmail.com. M-A-M-A-N-D-E-R. And we'll put that below. Um, yeah. But you can email me and I can um, reach out to you um, with, you know, answers to questions, any information that you need and um, how to get in touch with me here at the clinic. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And the, the question that we did get, um, someone said, you guys covered my question. So great job, Cody, <laughs> picking your topics to cover. Okay. Yeah, we're, well, we're on a mind link, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you guys for bearing with us, um, getting started. And this was so wonderful. Thank you, Cody, for your yeah. time. And yeah, so we'll keep in me. touch. You're All welcome. Right. Have a good rest of your day, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye.